So I have the tendency on this channel to be very negative about Linux, to be very critical of Linux, and I still say that it's proper to be critical of Linux and to criticize the things that you enjoy because you want them to be better, right? So I have done this many times on the channel where I go through and say, uh, you know, I hate how this works or I wish this was better or my most recent video I say that things aren't ready or things are buggy. I, I do that a lot and I know that the constant negativity can wear on people. So what I wanted to do today was talk about some positive things. So. I, what I'm going to talk about today, I've talked about in several other places, kind of scattered around in various podcasts and videos and blog posts and such. But what I want to do today is talk about some of the reasons why I really love Linux. And some of these will be, like I said, retreads over things that I've talked about before. Some of them will be new. So let's go ahead and talk about some really positive things about Linux, things that just make me very, very happy. So first... And we'll just get this one out of the way because, honestly, this is the least important. And I know saying that is going to piss some people off, but it's absolutely true. The open source nature of Linux is really good. I really enjoy that it's open source. I, uh, it makes me feel, I was going to say patriotic, but that's not the right word. But it makes me feel very good knowing the fact that I use Linux and it's open source and it's not Windows, right? So that's, for me, that's a one of the primary reasons why I use Linux. But it's not a big deal for me, right? I use some proprietary software. I'm as not I'm not as much of a zealot as some of the open source evangelists that are out there. Some people just absolutely refuse to use any proprietary software. I'm not one of those. I use Vivaldi as my main browser. It's proprietary, even though they say it's mostly open source, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> you know, I, I use things like a lot of Google Docs products because I have to, right? And I, there are other pieces of proprietary software that I do use, and some of them I do actually enjoy. So I'm not so hung up on the fact that it's open source to say that that's like the primary reason why I use it. It's not. It's cool that it is, and I'm glad that it is, and it's like an added extra awesome benefit, right? So we'll just get that one out of the way. I love it because it's open source, but it's not the primary reason why I love it. So another thing that I really love about Linux, and this is probably the primary reason why I like it so much, is because there's so much choice. Now, I have talked in a recent video, and I'm, I'm, I want to actually scroll through my list of videos here where I actually say, I, I think I entitled the video something like, I have a problem or something like that. And in that video, I talked about how I changed color schemes constantly, how I used to distro hop constantly how I change between window managers sometimes two or three times a day and people freaked out in that video because it's not normal I even said in the video that it's not normal to do those type of things I understand so I have a extraordinary case of ADD when it comes to my computer I enjoy changing things up quite a bit. I've tried to curtail it, and I have been successful in some areas. So I found a home in OpenSUSE. I have taken on the idea of using just one color scheme a month because you know I've been challenged to do so. I'm not sure I enjoy it so much yet, but we're you know we're getting there. So I've tried to curtail that. But one of the reasons why I love Linux is because it does kind of cater to the ADD demon inside of me. There's so much choice, so much customization in all of those choices that it allows me to just kind of play and just have as much fun moving things around and fitting the pieces together as much as I want to do. And it just makes me happy in that way. Now, in terms of productivity, <laughs> that may not be the best thing. I understand that and I deal with that in my own way. But for the guy inside of me that just likes to tinker, Linux suits that need very, very well, and more so than any other operating system that I've ever tried, I basically can make Linux look, feel, and work exactly the way that I want it to work. So that's awesome. Another reason why I love Linux, and this one is, I think, kind of controversial because so many people have such a bad experience with it, but I truly love the Linux community. I think that it's fantastic. And I've met so many people out there that I can legitimately call friends, some of whom I've met in actual real life. So that's something, I guess. And, you know, I just met so many people and I have so many of you guys who are in the audience who, you know, comment frequently, have joined the Discord server, have followed me on Mastodon. And we, we all just have had such a good time because of the thing that we use Linux. And that's, I think that's amazing. Now, are there, you know, boneheads in the Linux community? Absolutely. 
there's no community out there that doesn't have its negative Nancy's or whatever you want to call it. But for the vast majority of the people out there that I've met, I've just, it, it's, it's been such a positive experience and it is truly honestly, and I know this sounds like hyperbole, but it has changed my life, right? It, I have so many more people that I just can talk to about anything basically, but Linux specifically, that it just has changed the way that I interact and the amount of interaction I have with people. It's kind of awesome. And I think that without Linux, I wouldn't have that because I was a, I was a Windows user. Now, I, 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 I've said this before, Windows does not have a community. It's not true. Windows does have a community. There are Windows podcasts. There's Windows forums. They have a community, Matt. Just, but it, it's, if you are like me when you use Windows, I was a nuke and pave kind of guy. I did not ever solve a problem on Windows. I if, if I came up across a problem, it was nuke and pave <laughs> after maybe, maybe a very brief Google on how to s solve it, but probably not. Chances are I just downloaded the ISO again or did a uh, cr creation media, creation, or, uh, whatever the hell they call it, and, you know, nuked and paved. You know, and it was never go interact with the community, try to solve the problem. You know, it was never meet anybody. It was very insular, very solo, right? And on Linux, it hasn't been that experience because not only does more things go wrong because I'm constantly changing things, so I do have to go search out help. You, you kind of can't do the whole nuke and pave over and over again on Linux because you're going to constantly come up with problems. And well, you, you know, you can, but it's not going to really solve anything because there are other options, obviously. But you do have to kind of interact with people. And while I was interacting with people, I managed to find people who were just like me. They had, we had a lot of stuff in common. And, we, you know, we just kind of created a community, just this one community. And there's the broader Linux community. It's been fantastic. And over and over again, I've preached the merits of the Linux community. I've talked about it many times in many different videos on this channel. And there's always a caveat of the yeah, others boneheads. But for the vast majority of people in the Linux community, it's just awesome and i think that that's a, a big benefit for linux and also one of the reasons why i truly enjoy uh, what i do here on the channel and just generally using linux another reason why i like linux is because it's not afraid to change so windows has been on the nt kernel or a variation thereof for damn near 30 years I, I 24 years i suppose i think it came out in like 2000 maybe 99 or something like that you know they've been on the same kernel they they have a ton of legacy baggage there right and yes they've tried to change a little bit over the years like they, they, they've tried major change like windows 8 was a major change to how windows worked their users absolutely effing hated it right windows 8 is probably only second to windows vista in the amount of hatred that people have for it and i liked the change like if at that point i was still a windows user and i thought it was looked cool i don't think it was all that useful but it was i i enjoyed that change but i'm someone who enjoys change but on windows for the vast majority of people they hate change. They want things to stay as much the same as possible. Point in case, from Windows 10 to Windows 11, one of the major things that they changed was the position of the start menu. It was on the left-hand side, and then they moved it to the center. The number of articles I read online just absolutely freaking the F out about the fact that they moved the start button from the right or the left to the center is innumerable. There's just a whole bunch of articles and people shouting on Twitter about it. It's the stupidest thing. On Linux, we embrace change. Yes, yes, we have old people like me and people who are older who grudgingly go along with it. But because things like Fedora exists and Red Hat keeps pushing things along in Canonical sometimes, we get we get new things. We get new shiny things that eventually overtake the old things. So despite as much as as much as I bitch about Wayland, Wayland is the next new thing, right? And it, it's going to take over for a major piece of functionality that has been around for almost longer than I've been alive. You know, Xorg has been around since like 84. And if it's, that's actually the truth, that is longer than I've been alive. Xorg has been entrenched in the way Linux works for basically the entire time Linux has existed. And because of the developers behind Wayland, that's going to change over the course of the next few years. Xorg is going to go away 
for the most part, and Wayland's going to become the new thing that everybody uses. That's change on a fundamental level, and while there is bitching and moaning and dragging, some of which has come, you know, come from this direction. Absolutely, I've been very negative about Wayland many, many times in many, many videos over the course of the last few years. But still, the idea that they can make that fundamental change, that this huge change is very impressive. And it's not even the only option, you know, the only example, I should say, of change at that level. System D was not always the default init system for Linux. It wasn't, right? Pulse Audio was not always the thing that did audio on Linux. In fact, it's not even the thing that does it now. We've already we've all already changed to a new thing, Pipewire. So this ability to change, to adapt to new technologies, to make sure that Linux carries on into the future with things that actually work that are easily or more at least more easily maintained is awesome. It's very, very cool. And it's also not something you see very often in the desktop operating system realm. Mac OS kind of does it, but it's still very much the same as it has been for a very long time. You notice they don't change the UI very much. Yeah, yeah, they'll give a fresh coat of paint, but it still has the dock along the bottom, the bar along the top, and the windows function basically the same. And the underlying technology on Mac is something that most people don't give a rip about. If you use Mac, you don't care what audio stack it uses or any of that stuff. You know, that's a, you know, whatever. Same thing on Windows, only they're much more in tune with how the operating operating system looks, right? They want it to look the same and function the same as it has for the last 30 years. And if it doesn't, if you make even the tiniest bit of change, everyone's going to notice and everyone's going to freak out. On Linux, changes happen constantly. And I think that that has allowed Linux to adapt way better than those other two desktop operating systems. It's very much more like how mobile has adapted over the course of the last 10 years or so. You know, things have changed. There, you know, mobile was very early on in the, the adoption of 64-bit computing, right? You know, 64-bit has been around for a very long time, but they got just... Apple just one day said, you know, no more 32-bit. We're just not doing it anymore. Then very soon Android did it, right? And it took a while for Windows to kind of get there. And it was a change that, you know, we make a lot of, actually, we should just say this. We make a lot of fun about Windows because it has all this legacy baggage that's behind it. They do that because there are a lot of people who use that legacy baggage for things. They need those drivers for you know, printers or pieces of software that was written for whatever. There's a reason why Internet Explorer 6 or whatever was around for a very long time. It's because a lot of businesses used that browser to do their things. And, you know, they have that history and baggage behind them that Linux, despite being very well used in the server space, don't doesn't seem to care about as much because they can still make changes if they want to cause, because corporations and enterprises who use Linux can just stay on older versions and then tr eventually transition over. The powers that be behind the Linux kernel aren't afraid of change, and I think that that's awesome. I, I was on that point for quite a while, but I think that one of the reasons why I truly love this whole operating system is because there it feels like there's always something new and exciting happening. If it's not a new package format, it's a new containerization format or a new immutable distro or whatever. There's always something new and that's awesome. It, again, feeds into the ADD and all that stuff. So it's really very good. Another thing that I really like about Linux is that it challenges me to learn and to try new things. So this is kind of related to the, to the last one, but not entirely. I, I, one of the things that I really enjoy and it's something that I've kind of started to do over the course of the last year or so is to challenge myself to use new things. So I came up with a six-month Linux challenge where I said I was going to use a distro for six months. And that was all in a challenge to, to try to curb my distro hopping because I, I was distro hopping way too much. I was spending way too much of my time moving from distro to distro. I needed to actually do work, which is, you know, just this, you know, disappointing. But I had to do work, so I had to to figure out a way to stop having to completely set up my system over and over and over again. So I started with Redcore. Eventually, I failed on that challenge after about two months or so, and I decided to do a little disk hopping because I had the itch. And then I found, I decided I was going to challenge myself to something even harder. Two 
years on the same distro. I found OpenSUSE and goodness am I glad that I found it. it as if it was lost and I didn't know about it. But you guys understand, like, like, like I decided to try it and it has been amazing, right? I, I've made a video about how, why I, I chose it, why I like it so much. My point is, is that I've challenged myself to try new things that I wouldn't normally be able to do, like stay on the same distro for a long time, or to, I guess a better example would be to try different applications to do my work. So, you know, over the course of the last few years, I've tried Emacs several times. I've never actually fallen in love with it like some people have, but I've tried it. You know, I've tried things like Helix and Ed and VS Code and a whole bunch of different writing tools because I'm a writing, I'm a writer by trade and the tools that I use to write are important to me. So the, for the vast majority of the time, I still use Vim because Vim is freaking awesome. But I, I've I've hunted out and tried different tools to see if it could increase or at least make my workflow a little bit easier. Now, I've transitioned over to using Kate as my primary text editor because I was able to try that and it kind of challenged me to do things in a little bit different way. So there are these certain things, right? I, I'm always trying to try new things. Now, some of that is not always a good thing as I talked about with the ADD stuff. So I, I'm always trying out, and if there's a new window manager, I got, yeah, I got to go try that thing because it's a new window manager. I got to try it, right? I, I use the channel to blame, I, I like I blame the channel like I have, you know, I'm going to create content. I'm going to make a video about this brand new window manager, but I mean, I may not, but I, I want to try it anyways. I, I don't need the channel, the channel to, to have that excuse. Right. So sometimes it's not always a, a good thing, but I find that exposing myself to new technology, new ways of doing things, all that stuff stems from using Linux because there's so many different things and so many different choices that I can make in order to choose how I do certain things. So I, I do tr truly honestly believe that I've learned more on Linux than I ever did when I was a Mac or a Windows user. Now, there's this quote when it comes to Linux that if you, the only way, way you'll ever use Linux if you don't enjoy your time or some nonsense like that, or so, some variation on Linux is a waste of time because it's a time sink or whatever. I don't remember the exact quote, but you get the idea. We always say that, you know, there's no truth to that. You can basically be as productive on Linux as you can on Windows or Mac, which is absolutely true. If you just install Ubuntu and do your work, which is the vast majority of people, you can, in fact, just use Linux just like you use Windows. There's no time sync there at all. Now, the problem comes in if you're like me, who's a Linux nerd, and you're not able to help yourself when it comes to new shiny window managers, new distros, things like that. And then, yeah, it does hit a little bit on the product, you know, the productivity side of things. Like I spend more time racing than I should. I spend more time switching between window managers than I should. But I've learned a lot of stuff doing those things so that it's not completely all bad. But also, as long as it doesn't become debilitating, I don't see a big problem with it, right? I still get my work done. <laughs> okay, I, I know some people think that all I do is sit here and make Linux videos or think about the next Linux video or mess around on the Discord or read books or whatever. I do actually have a job, okay? I'm an editor for a historical magazine. I used to be a writer for the same historical magazine, so I spend a lot of my time reading other people's writing on history and then posting it to WordPress, which is by the way, if you ever have the choice, don't never use WordPress. It is so bad. <laughs> I hate WordPress with a passion. Um, that's but that's beside the point. I was supposed to say positive, but I, you know I can't be. It's it was never going to be 100% positive, but that's beside the point. So Linux does have a tendency to be a time sink sometimes for me, but it's also a productivity tool. For most people, it's just a tool. For other people, it's a hobby. For me, it's both. I can be very, very productive on Linux. I can also spend hours and hours creating a new color scheme. I can do both of those things can exist and ha be happy to do so. For me, it's just about a balance. And I, you know, I do a good job. I get my job, my work done, and then I can mess around with a new color scheme or a new window manager or whatever. I can do the things that I want to do. It's not either or for me. I know for a lot of people, it's just a tool. For a lot of people, it's just a hobby. One of the biggest criti critiques I hear from people who don't use Linux is that they just say Linux is a hobby, right? You can't actually get anything done on it. It's absolutely not true. Now, are there certain professions or whatever that you can point to that say, well, they can't use Linux because they have to do X, X, and X? Sure. Like if you have to use Adobe stuff, if you have to use 
CAD stuff, AutoCAD stuff, you know, you're probably not going to use Linux. You know, chances are. For the vast majority of people, though, who do work on a computer, you can get all that stuff done on Linux, and that doesn't mean that it also can't be something that you treat as a hobby because it, there's a lot of stuff here that's very exciting and entertaining, and that's what a hobby is for me. So I can do both and be very, very happy with it, and I have been very, very happy with it. So I could sit here and ramble for another 20 to 40 minutes, probably about 10 or 15 or 20 more things that I really enjoy about Linux, but I'm going to put it, a can on it for this time and uh, hand it off to you guys in the comment section below. Tell me a few things that you really love about Linux. Why do you use Linux? What keeps you here? What are some of the things that you truly, honestly enjoy over anything that's else that you've used before? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Let's have a wonderful conversation. Let's try to keep it as positive as, as possible. Again, I know I tend to be very negative sometimes, so I try, I'm try. i going to try to intersperse a little bit of positivity here. So happy days, sunshine, and all that shit. Yeah, bah humbug. <laughs> Right. So anyways, that's it for this one. If you have comments or that stuff, comments in the comment section below, you can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. Also, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you do that because I create a lot of awesome Linux content and you won't know about it if you don't subscribe to it. So hit the subscribe button. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also support me by heading over to the shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of merch, including t-shirts and hats and hoodies and desk mats and all sorts of stuff. That's shop.thelinuxcast.org. All the proceeds go directly towards helping me make more Linux content. And uh, that just can be only be better for everybody. So there you go. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it now here's the thing about the end screen credits i know i said i was going to get all the new patrons up there in the next couple days that was like six days ago i still haven't gotten actually got there to it yet so i promise if you have supported me in the last few weeks and, or you've changed levels or whatever i do appreciate it i haven't forgotten about you i will get that done as quickly as I can do. So, there you go. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.